That was that was really good. That was that was amazing. That is exactly what a deep fried skin should taste like. Chicken or pork. I mean, did you hear the crunch? Did you hear and like I said, the meat was still actually, uh, the pork belly was actually still soft inside. Surprisingly so, because it looks very burnt or extremely deep fried. Wow. I, if there's anything I wish you could do, if there was any time I wish you could just reach through the screen and grab a piece of my food, this would be it here. I cannot even wait to try it. I, I don't even know what to expect. I will be dead from all the oil today. I, I think that's going to happen. I have put together this beautiful display for you. Um, as you can see, I have so many delicious, traditional Filipino foods here. And I'm so excited to share it with you. I really wanted to make this an authentic experience with you guys. So I hope you like the way it looks. I really try to put some thought into the display of this video just because I really think it uh, brings in the food beautifully. Um, I've seen a lot of uh, people eat food in the Philippines um, through a, uh, several YouTube videos. They, they're eating on a banana leaf and I think that style of eating is called Kamayan. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. But um, they also like to eat with their hands too directly from the banana leaf. So we'll give that a we'll give that a try today. Cool. Let's get into the food real quick. Um, I'm so excited. We'll start over here. We have some pancit noodles. This here will be my dessert. It is a uh, I think it's called turon, turon, turon. However you pronounce it, it's it's delicious. It's basically a banana and jackfruit egg roll. So I guess it's perfect for uh, dessert once we're done here. Um, Right in front of here, I have sisig, uh, and I believe there are a lot of peppers, red bell peppers, onions, um, sautéed in that. It's it's pork meat, um, a lot of pork here. This one here is a famous adobo chicken, simmered in vinegar, soy sauce, bay leaves, peppercorn. Uh, it's got a nice kick to it uh, as far as um, flavor and a little bit of spiciness because of that pepper. Um, one of my favorites. Over here is where we're going to have the most fun and where I'm probably going to feel sick when we're done here. So right back here I have the crispy pata, which is uh, a pork leg, a, a deep fried pork leg. So you see here all the meat is um, kind of off the bone already, but uh, it looks especially crispy and I'm excited. And right in front of it I have the lechon kawali, which is uh, deep fried pork belly. So you can only imagine how that's going to taste. All right, so let's go ahead and have the sisig. So sisig, I believe, is um, it is pork, but it's but it's different body parts of the pork kind of put together. Mmm. And see if it can be prepared in a lot of different ways. I'm familiar with the seasick that is sizzling. Mmm. Mmm. Got a nice kick to it. Let's get some of that on there. Let's get it nice there. So pork. Mm. It's definitely got the pork belly in there. Mm, mm, mm. This is so good.
you wouldn't be able to tell, but this banana leaf here actually smells amazing. I love, I love the way it smells. So we're gonna attack the chicken adobo right now. So we got a leaf here, some bones on the side. This food is so good. And the thing about, oopsies. The thing about Filipino food. For me personally. Is that it tastes a lot like Vietnamese food, like home cooked style Vietnamese food. So, the flavors are just everything to me. So now, right now, I'm gonna try the crispy pata, which is the pork leg. Mm -hmm. This, this alone is just freaking incredible. Mmm. Okay, I'm gonna say right now I haven't had the pancit noodles, but I think the lechon. Lechon Kuali is my absolute favorite. Mm. You feel the crunch? Damn. Look at that piece of freaking pork leg. Like, I don't even know what to do with it. Mmm. Wow. Oh my god. This shit is unbelievable. Mmm. Yeah. That's so good. It's like the flavors are still hanging out in my mouth. In other words, it's oil, but 
Like, I'm almost at a loss for words. I... Yeah. That's... That's pretty good. So anyways, I'm gonna try just eating with my hands right now. So this is the pansi, which is a noodle stir fry um, with a little bit of pork. So let me give this a try. Mm. That's really good. See, these foods are very rem reminiscent of a lot of Asian cuisine. There's a little bit of a sweetness to it. This food is crazy good. You Filipinos know how to eat. If you're gonna fucking go there, you're gonna go there with all this fattening shit. So I had to find this uh, Filipino restaurant through Yelp. Okay. Where I live, there's really, there really isn't very many Filipino restaurants around. I have to drive to Cerritos, California. Mmm. Mmm. That is just pure fat. So good. And I noticed that a lot of Filipino restaurants around here, they don't really have high ratings. And I'm not sure why. I find that I find that in other ethnic cuisines, there may be, there are obviously those restaurants that don't have high ratings and there are the ones that do. But all the Filipino restaurants I checked out on Yelp, I swear they were under four stars or usually three and a half on average. And I'm not sure what it is because, I mean, I'm not Filipino. I know that when it comes to my food, I'm pretty specific too about where I go and what restaurant I'm having that type of food. but. To me, I mean, this is pretty amazing.
this restaurant is in Anaheim, California, right by Disneyland. Mm. Yes. I'm gonna drop dead from all this oil right now, seriously. <sighs> I actually feel a little, to be very honest with you, a little lightheaded. I normally don't eat this much fat, but man. I have to have to work out later, so I don't know if I'm gonna make it. Actually, I want this piece closer. I want this piece. So I literally, literally just ripped off the pork leg skin. I know I didn't finish this yet, but I really want to try this egg roll here. So there's kind of a glaze on it, if you can see the, it's a bit shiny. So it's, like I said, it's an egg roll, but it has jackfruit and banana in it. So I'll give this a try. Let's see what's, let's see what's inside. Mmm. It does. Jackfruit and banana on that side. Mm. If I am this quiet, you know that I am really just enamored by the food. It's like I keep on thinking in my head why this is, or asking myself why this is so incredible. I used to write Yelp reviews too, so <clears throat> I think Yelp is one of the greatest one of the greatest things invented. It really does help. 
you know, reading these reviews or choosing what restaurants you want to pick up food at. Yeah, I, I used to write reviews for restaurants or places I went to, but I stopped doing that. And the reason why I stopped is because I just felt like, oftentimes I felt like I was basing my experience off just one or two visits. And I don't think that's really I really don't think that helps explain really the overall quality of the restaurant as far as customer service and as far as food. You could either be having a bad cook that day or you could be having a grumpy hostess, you know, or host. So I mean, I understand. I've been in the food industry before. I've been in retail. I understand that they're not... The service is not consistent every single day. Now, it should be. I get it, yes. But shit happens. I mean, one day at a restaurant, maybe they'll have a bad cook on the line, or, you know, or a bad waitress or waiter or whatever the case. There's always an instance where you run into someone who's having a really just bad time um i mean obviously they should be on their best behavior the, you know we're paying them basically we're buying their their product but i do understand where people are coming from if they if they kind of give you bad service not terrible i mean terrible is is a whole nother thing but i'm just saying slightly bad not great and i i continue to base my reviews off of uh just a few visits and i didn't think it was I just don't think it really encompasses the, the whole experience at the, uh, the restaurant or whatever business it may be. Hmm. And the reason why I It's still all right from the adobo. Hmm. And one of the reasons why I stopped writing those Yelp reviews was because, you know, the ones that I wrote bad ones for, I found myself still coming back to that restaurant regardless of you know, me giving them one star. I thought about that and I was, I was telling myself, you know, that's kind of crazy that you would go back to a restaurant that you supposedly hate. Um, but see, that's the thing. I, I base it off on just that one experience with that bad waiter or waitress and I, and I, and I, and I start saying that the whole damn restaurant sucks when it, in actuality it doesn't. Writing a review is like writing a freaking paper or, you know, a 500 word paper or whatever.
That egg roll is bomb. That egg roll was so good. I wanted another one actually. Mm. I have a question actually. When you go to restaurants and you order to go, to go meals, um, pickups or whatever, do you still, I'm talking about Americans, I don't know if tipping is a thing outside of America, maybe, I don't know, Canada, I don't know what you guys do, but here in America, we tip our waiters and waitresses. Uh, usually for me, I tip the, I double the tax amount and that's the amount of tip that they get. Obviously, it could go lower or higher depending on you know what we thought or what I thought was good or bad service. Um, but with that said, I I never know if I should be tipping the restaurant if I'm picking up food because technically I wasn't really served by them. They just pretty much put my food together, kind of like how fast food workers, they, they're just putting food together, but you don't really tip them, you know? Um, and that's the way I see it. So I, I actually feel bad if I leave a restaurant and I don't leave a tip when I pick up food. So I don't, tell me how you guys are, you know, tell me how you go about it because, I don't know, I just like your opinion on it. It's, it's complicated. And I know everyone has their own little system or their own little way to go about it. But please let me know. I, I really want to know. And if you do work at um, a restaurant and you do always, you know, you're always prepping to go orders for uh, customers, I want to know exactly what you feel or what you expect. Um, and if you, and if you think that what you're doing isn't really, doesn't really call for a tip, then let me know too. I would love to know your opinion. That pile, I am not going to finish. I, you, you want me to die? I cannot eat that alone. This is for a freaking family of six. Nice efforts, but I am not finishing that. So did you notice how I stopped using my, um, Fork and spoon. I give it a I gave it an attempt. I do see my Filipino friends always eat with a fork and spoon. I I actually think it's quite ingenious, honestly, to use both tools to eat. I'm just not as great at it, right? Because I don't do that. Or I don't eat that way. But I thought it was cool, I thought it was a give it a little bit of a try but I don't think I did very well um, and I'm not sure why Filipino people use fork a fork and a spoon um, I'm thinking maybe it had something to do with um, you know the Spanish colonization back in the day back in like 1500 1600 something like that um, maybe that was like a Western influence, I'm not sure. But I do know that chopsticks are not indigenous to the Philippines. You know, they don't, yeah, they don't use chopsticks. I mean, they know how to use chopsticks, but it's not something that they normally use to eat their food. Um, I just think it's fascinating the way, you know, the way cultures eat their food. It's just so fun to me. I can't... That's part of the food experience. I love it so much because of that. And you know what's impressive to me, actually? Koreans, when they use the, the metal... the metal chopsticks. I mean, that, that takes a lot of dexterity in your fingers to hold metal chopsticks and to be able to pick out small fish bones. That's incredible. Have you ever seen any like any Korean do that? 
they're quite literally metal chopsticks. I, I don't even, I can't even explain it. I mean, I use chopsticks, I've, I know how to use chopsticks, but I know how to use the plastic or wooden ones. But when you give me those skinny metal chopsticks, I'm done, it's done. I can't do it. They're so heavy. My hand is not used to it. Anyways, I find that super impressive. Okay. I don't think I plan on dying today, so I think I have to stop eating this delicious and fatty pork over here. I can feel the oil seeping through my skin. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed, and um, this is obviously for my uh, Filipino viewers. You guys have been so supportive, especially through the Jollibee video. Um, I will definitely do a Jollibee part two. Maybe not anytime soon, but I will. It was incredible. Your food is incredible, and I, I, I don't know what else to say. I didn't say very much because I was so busy eating, and that doesn't happen a lot, so good for you guys. Thank you so much, and I will see you later. Bye. I'm saving this for lunch tomorrow.